All right, so here we are with solving inequality. This is actually going to be like three sections uh, all at once because they're really kind of really simple, easy sections. So the notes on this might be a little bit longer, kind of keep that in mind. Uh, but the objective here and the sections I'm looking at are sections one, two, and three from chapter three. Uh, what we want to do is we want to solve for an inequality for a given variable, and we want to interpret and graph the solution of an inequality. If you can understand what they're telling you, that's the best thing. So kind of keep that in mind. So let's look at some of these problems first, okay? Okay, let's look at this example. Here's x equals 4. This is something you've been doing already. You like, you solve a problem, you get the answer like that. What does that mean? Well, for a little bit, that means this. If you were to look at a number line, there's all these different numbers that, you know, that we know, okay? x is only that one specific number, 4. That's it. So I can put a dot there to say x is that specific number. Now, what happens when I say this? x is less than 4. I'm sorry, less than or equal to. Okay, so realize that that symbol that you see in between the x and 4 means less than or equal to. That's very important. So I have this. I do my number line again. I'm still going to put a dot at 4. But how do I show the less part? Well, I shade to the left. Because aren't all these numbers less than 4? Doesn't that keep going that way forever and ever and ever? So that's why I have the arrow attached to that. This right here represents every number going this way forever and ever that is less than 4. But I'm also saying equal to, so I include the 4. Okay. Hopefully you'll, you'll understand that. If you don't, then ask questions. Make sure to feel free to ask. Now, translating this, that's what it's saying. X is any number less than or equal to 4. That's my translation. That's my understanding. This right here is a sentence saying that. Keep that in mind. You can find this on page 168, but I just took a picture. These are the different types of inequalities you can have. Uh, A is less, or less than, greater than less than or equal to, greater, greater than or equal to, and this symbol right here means not equal to. So if I said x is not equal to 4, basically I'm putting an open dot at 4, and I'm saying x is any number but 4, okay? But realize this, our answers are any value that make an inequality true, that make a sentence, this is a sentence, true. Okay, here's some, say, basic, um, I don't know if I would, like, let's say some little things to help you remember how you should shade and what you should do. Less than or greater than should be an open dot. Less than or equal to, greater than or equal to should be a closed dot. If the variable is on the left-hand side, like you're saying x is less than, x is greater than, shade to the left. If it's on the, and, and then uh, for greater than, shade to the right. But on all of these, the x should be on this side. Okay? Okay, take a moment, copy these, pause the, the uh, drawing or pause the video here for a second, and then go ahead and graph those, um, graph those solutions. Okay, so hopefully you've already graphed because you paused the video, but let's look at the different answers. Here I got 5. I'm going to put an open dot because it says no line underneath and then shade to the left. Next one, open dot, shade to the right. Next one, close dot, shade to the left. And next one, close dot, shade to the right. So each one of these, the first one says x is less than 5, so I'm showing you all the numbers that can be less than 5. The next one says it's greater than negative 2. So I'm showing you all the numbers that are greater than negative 2. But I'm using those open dots as starting points. I'm just not going to include them. Open means I'm not including. Next one says less than or equal to negative 1. So I'm going to start at negative 1 and include it and shade to the left. And then the other one, close dot, starting at 3, shade to the right. All right, let's look at this one. Tell me what does this mean? Write it as a x equals, or x is greater than. 
To do that, it would be x greater than 8. And in the sentence, that would be x is greater than, is any number, keep that in mind, any number, greater than 8. So it could even be 8.1 or 8.01 or 8.001. You know, the, the point is there, any number. All the numbers that you could know that are greater than 8. All right. So here we want to, when we're going to solve, the same steps as you did with the equation. So the same steps that you did on your last test, uh, you're going to do here. And we're going to stick to some very simple one-step stuff first. Tomorrow or the next time, we'll look at two-step and multiple steps. Um, so here, uh, I see x plus 3 is less than 4. So how do I solve that? What's the opposite of a plus 3? Minus 3. Minus 3. So x is less than 1. Okay, And then draft the solution. X, you're trying to show me that x is any number that is less than 1. So here I'm saying these are all the numbers that are less than 1. Going to the left. But notice again, I'm not including 1, but I'm using 1 as a starting point. So I'm putting an open dot. Next problem, x is minus, x minus 2 and 7 tenths is greater than 4 and 2 tenths. What's the opposite of a minus? Add. So I add, and I get 6.9. And again, just put a thing in the middle, close dot, shade to the right. Now, if you notice here, on my number lines, that's what I usually do. I put my answer in the middle. So like if I give you like a, a number line, I'm not going to put specific numbers on there. I'll let you put your answer like there in the middle. Like put a little slash, whatever, say that's that number, that's my answer. And then you can put your dot and shade left or right. Okay, I'm putting in a star here, so this is something special to remember. If you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, now, notice the keyword. You're multiplying or dividing both sides by a negative. So if I multiplied on one side by a negative 2 and I multiplied on the other side by a negative 2, this applies. Switch the direction of the inequality. Well, what the heck do you mean by that, sir? Let's look. Here's my example. Negative 2 times x is, is uh, greater than or equal to 10. Okay, so I'm going to see here, this is multiplied, negative 2 times x. So the opposite of that is dividing by negative 2. Notice I'm dividing both sides by negative 2. Since I'm dividing both sides by negative, when I say x, the direction of this inequality now changes to less than, equal to negative 5. There's a worksheet we're going to do that will help kind of make you see that a little bit better why. Um, but there you go. That's that. Then do my graph. Negative 5. And the, putting the numbers to the left and to the right is okay. I'm mainly concerned about the one in the middle. But notice I got a closed dot shaded to the left. The arrow, the inequality points to the left, I shade to the left. Okay, let's look at this example. 6 times x greater than or equal to negative 48. So I'm going to divide by 6. Here, I'm dividing both sides by a positive 6. So because of that, I am not going to change the direction of the inequality. That gives me the same answer, or x is greater than or equal to negative 8, which I can put as a closed dot, shade to the right. Here's another example. x divided by negative 2 is, equal, is less than negative 3. I'm going to multiply, since that's divide, multiply both sides by negative 2. And then when I do that, when I do that, I will get x is less, I'm sorry, greater than 6. Now notice the, what the final answer sign is does not matter. What matters is that I was multiplying by negative 2, and that switched the direction of the inequality. All right, so my last thing I want to make note of here. If the variable is on the right side, switch sides before graphing the solution. And, uh, and there's a good reason to that. You'll avoid little mistakes. Okay, so for example, let's look at this problem. 7 is less than 2 plus x. So you subtract 2, that's not a hard part. You got 5 is less than x. A lot of times people will graph that wrong. So what I tell you to do is switch it. So I've got my x and 5, switch them. But make sure the inequality, make sure the inequality points the same way it was here. 
So if I'm saying it was pointing to the 5, it still points to the 5. Then graph. That's it for inequalities, uh, at least the first part of what we're doing. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, let me know in, in class the next day. Thank you very much, and I'll see you uh, at school the next day.